Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I like to do some additional testing to the Repco 1804 P9. And uh, when I did my first hands-on and uh, I tried to get uh, EMEA out and I also tried to compare the frequencies to my uh, BG7 TBL GPS DO and uh, I put it on the frequency counter and well all my big frequency counters with like 10 digits they couldn't find a difference they just agree it was the same but then I put my uh, BG7 TBL the FA3 frequency counter that has a lot more digits and then we found out that the difference was around 300 uh, of a thousand uh, hertz of a hertz so we were already more than three zeros below the below the hertz and then people said yeah but that is all nice most of the time that said yeah but if you want to be really really precise then um, you need to do it on the oscilloscope and uh, that got me thinking and i think yes i'm i'm going to do that because if we can see both and it is moving a little bit we should maybe see it move on the oscilloscope and i didn't do that test and then as an additional test i was also thinking well that 10 megahertz signal how clean is that actually so I also want to put it on the on the spectrum analyzer to see which is uh, which is clean or cleaner. Just a little compare. And um, also I like to do another test. Uh, I'm monitoring here the the Repco, and I'm mon monitoring here the BG7 TBL. And now it is programmed to all the three satellite networks that I can receive here. So that is the GPS, that is the GLONASS, and that is the Galileo. And also it supports the DGPS, but then SBUS. So uh, in the past, uh, the DGPS was always with a VHF system. Um, and then you need an extra antenna, but now it's a little bit smarter. They have a fixed location um, on the ground, send it back to the satellite, and then the satellite sends it back. So I, that is SBUS and you have a few systems of that. Uh, in my other video about uh, how I edit all the other networks, uh, I explain that, how that works. Um, but I have read somewhere that if you have all three networks, it doesn't necessarily mean you have the most precise uh, position. They said it is better to use two. And I never really understand why that is, but let's try that. Well, let's have again a look on this uh, frequency counter that I put one of the references in the back, one of the mission signal in the front, and then, well, if there is a difference between both the 10 megahertz, then we should see that as in the readout. Uh, let me see if this works. I need to put the cables away a little bit, but here is the FA3. And um, as you can see, we are now a little bit off, but it is below a thousand of a hertz already. And we are now, the last measurement was like uh, 130 off. And now this one was like 200 off. So 0.2 of a thousand. And on average, because we are still going a little bit up and down here, we are at 0.8 so 800 microhertz we are off so we are a little 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 bit off but also to put it in perspective if i am adjusting a transmitter i'm already happy if i can get it on a hertz precise or maybe on 10 hertz because yeah on transmitter that is usually enough and then we are already a thousand better so for me both these gps dos are perfect why is it not exactly the same well i see that this one now is somehow maybe because the temperature changed a little bit this is also like this 0.3 of a thousand that we have in a difference so this one is going a little bit up going a little bit down trying to get this 10 megahertz good but again the hertzes are here here we are below so we are below the thousands of hertz so now I wonder, will we able to see this tiny, tiny difference on the oscilloscope? So I'm just quickly going to connect. This is from the BG7 TBL. 
I put, of course, the terminator. We put that one here. Then we have the repco. Let's get that here also. Okay, maybe we can uh, get a little bit. That's okay. Well, I don't see too much movement, but maybe that takes a while because it is really, really little. And uh, maybe I should make a time lapse. I also probably think if I do this in XY mode. So 10 minutes uh, has passed, at least then. And uh, I forgot to put the clock, then it's better. But it was uh, 10 minutes because I started at uh, 37 and I finished at uh, 48, so 11 minutes. Um, you see it has moved a little bit. I will put the time lapse now. So we did see a little, little, little shift, but it is really so little because that was in 10 minutes. And I'm doing this actually at uh, 10 megahertz because that is what I use for a reference. So you could say, yeah, you need to do that with the one PPS, but I'm not using the one PPS, so I'm not doing that. Um, what I can do is put them in XY and then maybe we can also see the thing a little bit uh, moving. But it will be in the same, uh, same much of movement. Uh, that was indeed very interesting. This uh, XY mode, you can really see a lot better that, it, uh, that there is a little difference uh, between them. So thank you for the comments, <laughs> especially from the time people. They, uh, they know their stuff. And uh, it is cool. It is cool that you can see it. Now I'd like to do another test um, for the theory of is indeed having two satellite networks better than having three. So if we look here at the satellite information, we are here within 80 centimeters and before it was uh, 70 centimeters. And if we look at the CEP, I think that's sort of average they uh, compensate. Then it is also around these 70 centimeters. But you can see sometimes it jumps. <laughs> and I am not so sure if that is because if we look here at all the. If the receiver has only 12 channels and it needs to keep track of all of them, then maybe sometimes it jumps from one network to the other network. And then maybe you get these weird uh, changes. So I will try to switch off the Galileo and then only run on the CLONUS and the GPS. Well, if we look at the screen right there, uh, we have here the, the GPS, we have here the CLONUS, and we have here the Galileo. And even though it's a 12-channel uh, GPS receiver, you can see it can monitor still a lot of satellites at the same time. So not sure how they do that maybe some satellites are on the same channel but uh, yeah we keep track of a lot at the same time and you can see here it is in uh, D GPS mode so we are also using the S bus at the same time so this one should be locked very very well okay I quickly watched my own video again the video 190 where I changed the extra satellite networks to my uh, GPSDO, uh, this can be removed here. Yeah, I start the U blocks. You can, by the way, also find the software in that video the U blocks and the other program that I'm using. Um, I think I need to go to view, then configuration view. I have a generation 8, but only if you have a 9 or newer, but uh, usually it is uh, this one. Then you see a lot of options. I explain most of them that you need, but now I just go directly to the point here. And I have now activated GPS. I have activated here the S bus, that is the G GPS. Galileo is switched on and GLONASS is switched on. I will just switch off Galileo. And then I need to save it, I need to send. And then you will see here it is removed. 
so and now we can see if um, it really gets better if that is true what I have read uh, so we can close this and disconnect and we can close the program now we can have a look here a hack and hack and then we only have two networks left and now we need to wait and now we can see does it actually make the position more precise I'm not sure if that also means that the timing will be more precise but at least it has a better fix and then maybe it stays up 10 megahertz all the time while the satellite uh, is uh, trying to get this position I'm looking here and I said it is 12 channels or, but I think that was just a wild guess because I honestly don't know and it just said here without saying how many satellites it can track it just says it can do three at the same time so you need to make your pick which three that are and uh, I also found a, a data sheet and it mentioned exactly the same also three at the same time and it doesn't say any channels but I did look at my video and I counted then 24 satellites so I'm now looking at the screen recorder and I have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 satellites and this one is also strong this one is also strong this one is strong 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 but he decided not to track those so well maybe i miscounted so it's about 24 or 25 satellites that it can track at the same time and then on top we have here the dgps because of the s bus that is also being transmitted in comparison to the repco that can do uh, eight at the same time interesting well while the gps is still uh, trying to find this position i see it is jumping uh, a lot more than with the three networks because now i see a compensated ic one meter and uncompensated 1.4 so i'm not that impressed to be honest uh, i never tried to do uh, only galileo because they say you really it is the best if you have gps together with galileo or together with glonash and but i did have a better result but i'm not sure if that is because of galileo or because that is now missing so i can try that meanwhile i will also play with the spectrum analyzer i want to see how clean is the 10 megahertz from the repco and from the uh, bg7 tbl so um, let me just uh, get the harmonics and i will make a screen lamp well, i'm not so sure that that this is actually better because i see a lot of movement there but when i look here at the average this is now 60 centimeters and this is uh, 70 so maybe it is better we still have the dgps here so yeah does that improve our timing well i'm looking again and again i have this 0.3 of a thousand that it is different i can show you the picture so i did this quick test i tested gps with glonars and uh, galileo at the same time uh, both the, all the three networks then i was about 70 centimeters of precision of the location i did the gps with the only glonass then i was around 80 centimeters to a meter and now i'm back to gps with only galileo so two then i'm also a little bit around 1.6 to 270 centimeters no, 0 0.6 to so 60 to 70 centimeters so that is almost the same as the three of them so i can keep it and and in all configurations i used i did have the s bus so the gps was activated uh, i see now that it is also again now to a meter and that is with the gps in uh, galileo but my frequency is now 10
10, 10 spot on. So I want to do a little bit more testing. So I don't think I do that this video. I also did some testing on the spectrum analyzer and uh, Repco uh, suppressed the harmonics uh, with 35 dB. While the, the BG7 TBL did that uh, almost 50, it was 48. So the suppression was there uh, a little bit better, but 35 is also a lot, so that, that will not cause any problems. That was on the 10 megahertz uh, output. So that were some nice uh, experiments. I enjoy a lot. Uh, I tried a little bit to see which one is better. Yes, there is a difference. Uh, I think my conclusion is still the same. Uh, the Repco is still very, very good after uh, all those years. And uh, yeah, the Chineseums are not that bad. And there is, there is a, uh, the good thing about it uh, that the satellite receiver is a little bit newer. So you can receive all the uh, networks and the three at the same time. And you have the s bus the DGPS, which is also uh, good. So it, maybe it is a nice idea, but it will be very complicated, I'm afraid, to get these newer GPS modules inside of the Repco. And then you probably have a perfect combination. Was it not that the Repco has this special uh, TSIP protocol that it communicates between the receiver and the and, uh, and the control unit. So that will be very difficult to get that working, I think. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you next time.